Um, so, what was your question again? What do you think about arcades? Yeah, what do you what think about arcades? What kind of a question is that? I hate oh. arcades. Don't look behind you. Episode over. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I love arcade machines. Arcade machines are great. They envelop the user in a way that a console never can. Like a, like environmental arcade, you can sit down at the arcade. It's not shooting just, games. It's arcade. not just that. It's it's the fact that you are sitting or you're bellying up to this single purpose device. You know, it is there to play video games. You're not going to watch TV on it. You're not going to do anything else on it. it. Is there the controls at your hands? There's not a keyboard. There's nothing else there but a stick and some buttons or whatever. You are there solely to play games. Not only that, you have the artwork that surrounds you. Sometimes you got the bezel artwork and the artwork on the sides of the cabinet, the marquee art. All of that's part of it. The, the, the distinctive sound of an arcade machine speaker, totally different than a TV. Um, everything about the experience is great. You know, I like the sound of an arcade in general. There's sort of a, there's sort of a, a gently woven digital tapestry of noise that's happening in the background. You can always hear, distinctively hear certain machines that are peeping up now and again. Your Galagas or your Karate Champs or your Dragon's Layers are all peeping in the background. It does. Really, having the arcade experience is, is a uh, something that's hard to, to to put together on a console. Some people, and they they've tried. If you'll recall, remember the uh, Xbox 360 had that arcade mm-hmm. uh, which gimmick. I thought was a neat a neat thing, but it was very short lived. It did not do well. Well, I thought it was a good idea until I played it and realized that they did a kind of a half job. Did you, uh, did you do a lot of arcade playing back in the day, John? Uh, probably not as much as you guys, but uh, yeah, I went as often as I could. Uh, starting with Aladdin's Castle up there at the mall. Sure. You know, and then uh, when they opened the one down in Canal City, I went yes. down there a lot. I used to go to both those. The Aladdin's Castle at the mall was known for its uh, wide array of laser disc games. Mm-hmm. That was sort of its thing. They had That's one of the few places I saw Vegas Battle. I saw, of course, they had the Dragon's Lair with the extra screen on top, which was awesome. They had a uh, cliffhanger. Some of the more obscure uh, laser disc games, and then the Huntington or the uh, Kanawha Mall uh, arcade was the first place I ever saw Mortal Kombat. It's funny you remember this stuff. What was the Kanawha Mall arcade called? Kanawha. Well, it was. I don't know. Don't think it had a name, did it? I don't remember it having a name. I just thought it was the arcade. It wasn't Power Play, was it? You know, I don't remember. I, some of the mall ones they didn't all have. Some that just said arcade, and you walked in. Yeah. But. They had the, uh, here's a weird one, they had that weird laser disc NFL game. Have you ever seen that? No. Bizarre. You remember that? It was like no. The, it was a game where the Raiders played, I can't remember, the Broncos or something like that, but it was a, it was a laser disc football game. Very wacky. Are you sure you're not imagining nope, that? No, it's a real game. I've never heard yeah, of that before. It's, in my it's life. a real game. Next time we do an arcade, so you can put that on your list. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, do you remember frequenting certain arcades? And the, do you have the memories like I do of the games that were in the arcades? Because oh, you're a little, you know, you're a little younger. So growing up, when I, when the when the arcades were in their heyday. Um, I was slightly afraid of the arcades because I was very small. You know, when, you, when what year would you say was the peak of, say, gold mine at the mall? You know, a lot of people think that, and we've talked about this before, a lot of people think arcades... I'm not talking about arcades, I'm talking right, about gold mine right, at the mall. Right, but I'm saying a lot of people think that arcades in general peaked in, say, 83, 84. Um, for me, I would say probably... Uh, 87 or 88 later. And, okay. the, and the reason I say that is I was older, especially to the point where I had my own car. Mm-hmm. That for me, they peaked because I could go there whenever I wanted. So this I is wanted. another self, self-referential thing, just like the music thing. Be, the, the, you were old enough to appreciate the arcade at just the, coincidentally the time where they peaked. Well, I liked fighting games, okay? Fighting games really didn't come into their own until later on. Um, uh, plus, you had the good thing about arcade, you know, in the late 80s, you had all the good games that were from the early 80s. Plus, you had, like, games that were beautiful. I mean, there were games I'm not even really into, but they came out and you're just like, holy smokes, that's the best thing I've ever seen. Ridge Racer comes to mind. I remember the first time I saw the arcade version, I couldn't believe how incredible it looked. Like, there's no way this could get any better, you know. And I thought the same thing when I saw Outrun too. So it's you know it it, it steps up. But I would say that was my favorite. So time. Eight, you know, the arcade peaked in eighty seven. I was six years old in eighty seven. I, I know you so, guys sort of got screwed on that. So yeah, I I didn't I didn't I never went to an arcade that was the classic arcade. You know, smoky, dark. By the time that I started my arcade journey, it was in the early to mid nineties, and the gold mines had shut down, and they were replaced by Tilt in the mall. Which were horrible. And uh, it was very brightly lit. 
the redemption scene was starting to come out and that that, that was no good. Um, a lot of my arcade memories, good arcade memories, actually came from uh, Showbiz Pizza. Because they had, I remember distinctly playing Neo Geo machines and things like that that, that were really cool. I remember, play, it was the first place, was a Showbiz where I played Final Fight, of all things. And, and um, I sat down with Brent and we beat it. And we were very impressed. Like, this game came out of nowhere. You know, it looked beautiful. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, we, you know, I used to go to parties at those places. And slowly but surely, the video games evaporated, just like regular arcades. And because kids were more into and my kids sort of the same way. They're more into ticket stuff. They want to get a goodie. You know, despite the fact you just literally put in a quarter and it's gone like that. Right. You know, now if you walk into a, an arcade, it's almost all of the Redemption stuff, and very few arcade games still make the cut. Now, have you been to any of the uh, newer arcades that are kind of capitalizing on nostalgia, perhaps combined with a bar? Have you been to any of those? Before? I have been to a couple. There was an outfit in uh, Lexington called Geeks that had a, it was a bar, and it had a stage, and it had an arcade. And I knew this place was doomed <laughs> because I was a geek, and no self-respecting geek would go in there with all those crazy p- drunks. <laughs> and then on top of that, the shows they would bring in, I mean, who would you expect to play at a bar like that? Well, you wouldn't expect, say, like local speed metal legend right. or uh, 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 you know, heavy metal uh, stuff. Now, I like that kind of music, but I could just tell, like, this thing's going to fail, and it failed like that. But other people have found the secret formula, and these little bar caves are popping up all over the place. I don't know. If, are, I don't think are there any in Charleston that you know of. Not that I know of. I looked at one that was in Columbus uh, called the Eight Bit Bar. I think something like that. Oh, have you? Been but there? they're all, they're always in combination with a bar. Yeah. yeah. No, I haven't been there, but I, I was. Well, that's where there. your revenue comes from. Oh yeah. You know, now I've been lucky enough in recent years to visit uh, two pretty spectacular arcades. Uh, one was in uh, when I went to Disney World on a business trip. Um, in downtown Disney, which is like a shopping center just adjacent to the parks, they have a huge arcade that's multi, multi floor. It might be five floors tall. And on the top floor, there is literally almost every classic game that you can think of. Oh, yeah. And it's one of these things where you pay a flat fee. I think it was 20 bucks to get in and you can play as much as you want. So that was neat. But the, yeah. the coolest place I've been to was in Chicago. Not your favorite place in the world, but one of my favorite places. Galloping Ghost Arcade in Chicago. I've heard nothing but good things. That place is amazing. And what makes it cool is, you know, the the Disney thing, like you'd expect, you know, it was all very... Everything there was in great shape and everything, but there really wasn't a lot of soul to it. Galloping Ghost, there were high score challenges everywhere. They had cool stuff up on the walls. Uh, You could tell that there were were regulars that really cared about the place, and it was just an awesome experience. I, uh... It's it, the funny thing, and it's, it's sort of sad. Uh, and you're somewhere between us in terms of age. But when I was a kid, um, and arcades were booming, and I mean before '87, uh, they were everywhere. In fact, as we sit here in your basement, there was an arcade less than a mile from here at the eight is at the uh, shop, the the uh, grocery store right up the street here. They had an arcade in that, and it was a good arcade. Uh, it, it, they had in this extra little area they'd built. There was an arcade, and it was nice. Uh, grocery stores had arcades. Uh, uh, every convenience store had an arcade machine. Bowling alleys had awesome arcades. I mean, awesome ones. Not like now where there's a couple games. <coughs> uh, and so it was. Everyone was video game crazy, and it was great for a while. Sears had an arcade called the Wizard's Den. I mean, Sears had an arcade. No one even thinks about that. It was a pretty good arcade, uh, and. Uh, it was a cool time to be a kid if you were into video games. And probably a decent time for a parent because you just give the kid 50 cents or a buck, send them to the Wizard's Den, and you go over and do your thing. And I remember the Wizard's Den in particular because it was right beside the Sears candy counter, which is also gone. <laughs> you know, so, man, I feel, I feel like I said, I'm the dinosaur. I remember all this stuff. But it, it was cool. I'm glad I got to see it. And it certainly uh, had an impact on me since I sort of got my own little tiny air and arcade together based on, you know, and Wizards did was in my head a lot, and my brother too, when we put it together. Well, speaking of that, we should probably talk a little bit about our respective arcade machine collections. All right, go ahead. Um, so, uh, I'll start because mine is much smaller than Aaron's. 
Uh, I've owned a, a grand total of four arcade machines in my life. Uh, the very first one was when I lived in a small apartment in Newport News. And when you live in a small apartment that's on the second floor, what a better <laughs> what a better thing to do than haul a huge honking arcade machine up the stairs. So um, I went to a local distributor who this is the pla- this is the only workplace that I've been into where people are just it just pot just everywhere. Hey, that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's my current workplace. That, that's that's <laughs> drug lab. That, that's how I knew it was something special. And anyway, I was like, man, you got any old machines or anything? And he's like, well, I've got this old uh, golden tea, you know, but the, it doesn't work. You know, something's wrong with it. And um, so I was like, all right, I'll take it for. I think I paid like it was less than a hundred bucks. It might have been seventy five bucks. Um, but he had all these marquees. I went back in his office, and he had all of these marquees just lined up on uh, against the floor, uh, you know, lean, leaning up against the wall. I was like, man, how much you want for these marquees? And he's like, I don't know, about eight bucks a piece. So I took a huge stock of them, and that's where these all these marquees came hmm. from. I wish you so, bought them all for that price. I know. Oh, I wish much. I would have. Um, but uh, but that was the first machine, and there was a guy on the digital press forums that lived in Virginia Beach, and he drove up, and basically, there was nothing wrong with the machine, it just was not connected right, and I didn't know anything, Yeah. and uh, and he hooked it, everything up for me, and I had, boom, Golden Tee Golf. Which Golden Tee was it, do you remember? 97, 97. So a newer one then, not like Golden Tee 1 or 2, this is one of the nicer ones. I don't know when Gold, the Golden Tee series started, to be honest with you. If you've ever you. played Golden Tee 1 or 2, they're very ancient. Are they? Okay. Yeah, but Golden Tee 2, what a game, I used to play it all the time. In fact, I played it way more than the new ones. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Golden Tee was uh, it was it was a fun game. It was not my first. You know, it, it wouldn't have been my first choice, but that was what was available. Um, and when I moved out, uh, as the guy, as the movers were carrying it down the stairs, they dropped it, and the monitor cracked. And Greg and I was just like, just put it in the dumpster, and that was the end. Because I was moving to Korea, and I didn't care. Yeah. Um, the second machine that I got was uh, was for, through you and your brother. So I just moved here to back to Hurricane, and uh, you're like, "Hey, we're at this place." That was back when you guys used to do cool stuff, you're, and uh, and you're like, "We can get this machine for you. it's a hundred bucks." And I was like, "All right, get it." And it was a Double Dragon two, and uh, you you know you brought it over and we cleaned it up, and uh, it it uh, it fired up a little bit, but the screen was real broken. So uh, we opened it up and uh, recapped the monitor, and uh, lo and behold, it worked worked great. So I took that machine and uh, took the uh, took the board out of it and got an iPack and put a PC in there and put lighted buttons in it and all this stuff and uh, turned it into my first main machine. Um, and uh, then, I guess it was maybe a year or so later, we're in your old outbuilding and you're like, I got this old arcade machine. And I was like, do you want to sell it? And he's like, yeah. And so you sold me that old arcade machine, the Mud Mountain. The Mud Mountain main machine. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that, since it was your machine for many years before it was mine. Well, when I lived up on the mountain, um, this was a machine that I drug up the hill, then down the stairs, then back into the in the and then you know put it in there. It was a, a machine that one of our uh, mutual friends had had that it had been a Street Fighter clone that I, they just gave up on it. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, I'm too stupid to give up, and so I <laughs> took it in and got it working and put my stuff in it. And it was, you know, I had, not to get too far into it, but I'd had a decent little arcade in Lexington before I moved back. And unlike your trip to Korea where you didn't care, and you thought, I cared plenty. Mm-hmm. And I was flat broke, and, and I had to sell off my whole collection. It was brutal. It was a downtime in the air in history. Uh, but, uh, um, so I was really wanting to get it back something to play with, just to actually have something to play. And so that was the cabinet. And uh, I had a friend of mine come up and paint the side of it, you know, wackily. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was just a beat-down cabinet that I had. But, I mean, the bones were good, clearly. And you you did a good job cleaning it up. Yeah, and, and uh, so you know. that machine became the uh, Neo Geo machine that you see behind you, fair viewer. Yeah, it looks very nice. Um, so you did yeah, a good job I, I actually, it, uh, that was one of the biggest projects I've ever undertaken was just the painting. Because it was, you know, you have to match the color. I wanted to get it exactly in the multiple coats and everything. Um, but uh, I was happy with the way that everything but the control panel turned out. Uh, I wish that I would have uh, bought an overlay instead of just having the black metal, but hey, so it, it There's always time, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, and finally, the uh, the other, the fourth arcade machine that I bought was uh, I bought it at an auction, a legit arcade machine auction. 
Um, I get these flyers all the time, I guess, because I've been there and I've registered. But they're in Tennessee. They always have these. Uh, they're called amusement auction company or something like that. And uh, basically, they're a huge marketplace for people to buy and sell machines on commission at auction. And um, I went there with Eat. <clears throat> we rented a trailer. It's like a seven-hour drive. It's not a not a short drive at all. Um, and went down there and. <clears throat> They'd gone through a bunch of cheap machines, and I was like, well, I'm going to hold that for something special. And I saw this Mario Brothers, and boy, I was like, man, that's a sharp-looking Mario Brothers. I think I'm going to bid on it. And so I bid on it. Uh, after, I think I paid almost as much in commissions and fees as I did uh, the that's machine itself. You, yeah. um, but, you know, put it back in the, tra- put it in the trailer and brought it home. And uh, I'm really glad I have it, because I love Mario Brothers. It is by far my favorite Nintendo arcade game. Um, and it, it's it's a looker. It looks good. Uh, you know the bezel art is all there and everything. The side art I could probably stand to replace it, but it it looks fine. You know. Yeah, it's a good game, and uh, uh, it's one of my favorites too. I think it's very <laughs> underrated in the N- Nintendo pantheon of arcade games. Now, do I like it more than Popeye and Donkey Kong? Probably more than Popeye. Donkey Kong's awful good. Well, that's your all-time favorite, but right? One thing you can do on this is you can't do on those is have two people playing at once. Plus, it's got the added benefit of having that crazy two-player where you can kind of screw each other if you want to. And mm-hmm. It's a great game. So it's a good choice, man. Yeah. And you paid a decent price. Yeah, yeah. So those, that's my collection of, of arcade machines. Aaron? We'd be here all night if I went through my litany of, of purchases. <laughs> Why don't you just hit some highlights and then what you currently have? The first thing we that I ever bought, my brother helped me get a WrestleFest, a WWF WrestleFest, the big 25-inch screen four-player variety. Man, I love that machine. I loved it, and we played. And it's one game I never got tired of, and still, and, and still haven't. Just played these, play the crap out of my friends. All get together, we play it. Uh, and it was unfortunately one of the casualties of my move back, uh, and so, I, and I never got it back. I, I really love that one. But uh, uh, anyway, I got the bug, and so me and Brent were getting our toes wet, and we bought a batch of games that I've milled around with. I mean, I've owned a ton of games. Some worked, some didn't. Some I could fix, some I didn't. Some I just dealt. Uh, right now, I've got a, uh, let's see, what do we have? Donkey Kong uh, uh, with a, with a uh, expander in it, so I can play Donkey Kong 1 or 2. I've got uh, uh, Galaga, which needs some monitor work. Um, help me out, Bo. What are, the, what are the video games do I have in there? Uh, you've got Main Event. I've got the Main Event, which has got my main stuff in it. And then we mostly switched over to Pinballs. Uh, when the main scene got so big where we could play the majority of the games we wanted. And so we've got a bunch of pinball machines uh, in there as well. Uh, and then I've got a spot for console games too. So the arcade has console stuff in it as well. But, you know, you get the bug for arcade stuff. I mean, if you listen to Rob O'Hara's uh, podcast, he talk, or reading of his books uh, where he talks about collecting games, I mean, it's, it's a dangerous habit to get into. And um, it can cause you trouble i mean it, it's it literally it's dangerous the fact that you gotta move these heavy <coughs> ancient machines around and uh and uh, then you've got to take all that space up in your house then you've got to fix them uh so it's it's you've got to be sort of crazy to get into it but it's a, it's a lot of fun you know to have at least one have you ever had any uh, arcade stuff at the house no but i was going to ask if you all had ever dealt with uh derrick's down on the west side I've seen. I've got some stuff from Derek's that that, that but I never actually went there. Just that they had been passed to there. Speaking of what you're talking about, just to, uh, to close the topic, uh, you're talking about having your uh, golden tea up in your apartment. I bought a, uh, a a machine which ended up being Atari X's and O's. They told me it was a um, it was a cocktail table, right? So it was at it was on the campus of Ohio State. It was on like the fifth floor at the student dorm and this guy had this huge machine in there and we had to carry that sucker and stick it in the elevator and i mean it barely made it in we couldn't even ride with it we had to send it down <laughs> and wait for someone to bottom to open the door and pull it out before the thing <coughs> closed so that's what i'm talking about you do a lot of stupid things uh when you're younger you said we were no longer adventurous and you're right 